Hello and welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. And with me today, Monica Lukey, the Chief Medical Officer at Immune Pharmaceuticals and also the founder and CEO of Immune Pharmaceuticals, Daniel Tupper. So thank you very much uh, for joining us. And I understand you have a big announcement uh, involving your drug, Cepline. Monica, do you want to take that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us, Jane. Um, Last week, we got some very nice feedback from the FDA. Uh, we had prepared a, a briefing package for them to review our plans to move forward with Cepline, which is a drug used in patients with acute myeloid leukemia who've had first remission, and it's intended to treat patients uh, in order to maintain their remission. And the FDA gave us some very nice, clear guidance okay. on how we move forward with the drug, the patient population that we'll be studying, what would be best to be studied, the endpoint, we have an agreement on overall survival as an endpoint, and um, a clear path forward, which is great news. So what, um, which leukemia patients might this treat? Um, so patients with acute myeloid leukemia okay. who have had a response to induction and consolidation therapy, the intent is that to use IL-2 at a low dose together with Cepline, you'd be able to stretch out that remission even further. Okay, and um, Dr. Tepper, tell me a little bit about um, what this might mean for the company. Where do you go next with the FDA and what this might mean in the long term for Immune Pharma? So we have to submit a final you know, protocol and get ready for the uh, you know, phase three overall survival uh, study. That's a study that will take you know, several years, and obviously it's a pivotal study. So the objective is that based on uh, good data that uh, Cipline will be ready for approval in the United States. And I want to mention that, you know, Cipline was uh, approved in Europe uh, based on leukemia-free survival. So we already have a lot of data on Cipline. Recently, a phase four study was presented, uh, the results were presented at the American Academy of Cancer Research. So this is a drug that, you know, maybe was not fully understood, yeah. you know, five to ten years ago, but with the, uh, the rebirth of cancer immune therapy, the combination of cypline with low-dose IL-2, you know, seems, you know, poised to be uh, a major option for uh, patients that have initially responded to leukemia treatment. And this um, could be extremely changing for the company. Uh, Celator New Jersey had a similar situation. Tell me about that and what happened to that company. So Celator has been developing a drug for induction treatment. So that's what leads to the first remission. So actually the success of the Celator drug may increase the market potential for, uh, for Cipline. Um, you know, Celator was a small company you know, roughly the same market, market cap as us. I think it was $35 million, you know, prior to data. It, after data, it jumped to 750, and it was eventually acquired by Jazz Pharmaceuticals for $1.5 billion. So we can only hope, I mean, first of all, I think we should hope that we're bringing a new drug for patients because sure. currently there's no drugs approved, uh, no drug approved by the FDA for maintenance of uh, remission in uh, acute myeloid leukemia patients. And second, you know, obviously for uh, immune shareholders, uh, that would be uh, wonderful. They've been very patient. So I think we, we hope that uh, this is going to have a significant impact. So for the shareholders, like how long might this process take? You're going into, is it clin uh, third phase Please clinical take. trials? Okay. Um, when might this actually, when will the shareholders know something, whether the data is really going to support moving forward with it? So we, we already have a lot of data okay. uh, on Cipline. It's been in hundreds of patients. It was approved on leukemia-free survival you know, basis in Europe. Uh, the standards of the FDA are you know, one step above overall survival. Uh, but there is a relationship between leukemia-free survival and overall survival. And, and the data that was presented at the American Academy of Cancer Research, I think, further supports uh, looking at Cipline in combination with uh, low-dose IL-2. So the, uh, the full impact, obviously, you know, is several years away, you know, upon you know, approval of the drug. But as we uh, remember that Cipline is, uh, is approved in, in Europe and can be used in combination with low-dose IL-2. So the awareness about, you know, Cipline, I think, is going to have an impact much before we have full results of the overall survival study. Okay. And then, Monica, talk to me about BERT. I'll let you go ahead and pronounce the full name. Okay. So that's... 
our monoclonal antibody, bertolimumab, that you're referring to. And uh, that is currently in phase two trials. In um, One is in bullous pemphigoid, and one is in ulcerative colitis. These studies have been uh, enrolling patients in mo for a couple of months now. And as we, uh, we've recently had an acceleration in that enrollment, uh, which bodes well for us, and we're on track to complete the studies as planned uh, and uh, complete enrollment by the end of this year. Okay, and then finally, Dr. Tepper, how does Immune Pharma unlock the value of all these interesting treatments that you're doing right now? I mean, clearly people always ask the question, you know, you're a small company and you have so many wonderful assets, so how do you unlock the value? So the decision that we've made is really to focus Immune Pharmaceuticals, IMNP, the public company, on bertolumumab. As Monica mentioned, you know, there's data coming in uh, the first half of uh, 2017, there's potentially a surge clinical study in the topic dermatitis uh, that would be initiated and even potentially uh, in 2017 and potentially partnership with bigger pharma and, and big biotech. So it's a relatively short uh, time to data and, and partnership. The other assets, you know, the way to unlock the value is uh, what we've started doing is to create a private, privately funded subsidiary um, because that allows to fund each of the programs. In pain, we've announced Maxim Pharmaceuticals around Amicat, in dermatology with nanocyclosporin, and in oncology with Cipline and you know, other drugs that we have in the pipeline. So funding each of those subsidiary allows to move forward the, the, the programs without diluting the, the shareholders in the public company. Okay, well congratulations on the positive feedback from the FDA and, and good luck in the future. Thank you. Thank and you very uh, much. hopefully um, for the people suffering from this disease that you can bring a treatment to them. So thank you very much, uh, Monica, and also Daniel for joining us today. Thank you. And you thank you as well for joining us on Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ Market Site. And for more information on small companies doing some interesting things, you can go to smallcapnation.com.